has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. I always love getting a Maxwell Minute with my guy, Rich Sermonello. Hey, Scotty, we're just a week away from the 2023-2024 Maxwell Awards Gala at the College Football Hall of Fame. First time we'll be doing it in Atlanta and first time with our TV partner, Sports Grid. I love this marriage. It's like peanut butter and jelly. It's like Captain and Tennille. Maxwell and Sports Grid next week honoring the best in football at every level from high school, college, right through the NFL. I want to talk today about a coach that we'll be honoring in Atlanta. It's it's not Kalen DeBoer. He will be there, the new Alabama coach, uh, Washington going to the national championship last year. It's not necessarily Dan Campbell. Great job with the Detroit Lions. But we sprayed all fields here at the Maxwell. One of the awards that we manage is the Get in the Game Impact Award. It's an award from Andy Talley, the former legendary Villanova head coach, the College Football Hall of Famer, started an award over a decade ago to honor coaches or players who do more than just excel on the football field, but actually save lives through bone marrow donation. And last year, we honored uh, a, both a player and a coach from Kansas State, Will Howard, their quarterback, now at Ohio State, their defensive backs coach, Van Malone, for the drives that they did, the donation drives that they did in Manhattan. And this year, we'll be honoring University of Montana head coach, Bobby Houck, a great football coach, uh, 13 years uh, in Missoula, 13 years with the Grizzlies. He's won 129 games, uh, eight Big Sky titles. Uh, he's the winningest coach in the Big Sky Conference. But the reason why we're honoring Bobby is because he has drives on the University of Montana campus every year to bring recognition to bone marrow donation. Uh, 800 registrants from students, faculty members, and players, six life-saving donations uh, through the drives that they've done. And what I really like about Bobby, having a chance to interview him, Scott, he's more than just bringing attention to that particular campus. He's actively recruiting other coaches and other football programs to have these kind of life-saving drives for bone marrow donation. So Bobby Houck, one of the more unique winners that we'll be celebrating in Atlanta next week for the Get in the Game Impact Award for what he's doing, not just as a football coach, but for someone who's bringing attention to life-saving bone marrow donations. Awesome stuff from Rich Sermonello. I know your boy, uh, Joey Prons Lisi, is going to the Maxwell Awards, Carver High. Is this documented? Is it true? Uh, I believe so. I have not had those discussions with him, uh, but I do believe so, uh, from what I recall. Yes, that is Horrible true. news <laughs> coming across the wire today, uh, Carver High, with the passing of the legendary linebacker Andy Russell of the Pittsburgh Steelers, 70s dynasty, four Super Bowl winning teams. Of course, no one ever forgets him with his 93-yard fumble recovery in the playoffs, the longest ever in a playoff game. Also, his handing the first trophy of the Steelers' six to the Chief, Art Rooney, after they beat the Vikings at Tulane Stadium in the rain in New Orleans. And I was good friends with Andy Russell and knew him well after his career and where he lived in Pittsburgh next to one of my dear friends out in Nevillewood. My man, Andy Russell, should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's an absolute atrocity that he's not in the Hall of Fame. Now that he's gone, hopefully the idiots that run it will finally wise up like they've done with Mango, our boy, uh, you know, uh, in Chicago. All I know is um, Andy Russell, gone at 82, of course, played at Missouri and was a legend in Pittsburgh with the Steelers. Gone too soon. 
Very sad. 82 years old uh, for Andy Russell today. Very sad news out of Pittsburgh uh, with that. Uh, I have a couple other things for you here. Uh, Football-wise, uh, top cornerback prospect Nate Wiggins from Clemson. 4 2 Everybody loves the 40. Then he limped off the field with a hip flexor Uh-oh. injury. That's unfortunate. Uh, still thinks he'll be ready for his April 6th pro day. Good luck and Godspeed, young Not man. something uh, pop. Ste- Nah, that's never good. Uh, April 6th. That's uh, You got a month, my man. You better get to work. Uh, Steelers general manager Omar Khan uh, made the rounds yesterday, Scotty. Uh, he said he has no decision on Naze Harris for his fifth-year option, of course, which he has to make a decision on in the next few weeks. He also had some things to say about Kenny Pickett, has faith in him, but wants to bring in some competition. Your general manager. Here he is. I mean, we have... We have uh... I have full faith in uh, in, in Kenny. Um, he's shown us some good things, and obviously there were some issues with the offense. And I'm excited about the impact that that Arthur Smith's going to have on him. You know, and Arthur's very optimistic about Kenny, and um, you know, I know they've communicated and um, like said we'll, we'll have uh, some strong competition there, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, I believe yeah. absolutely nothing of what just came out of his mouth. Yeah, I, I really don't either. Like, how could you say, if you had full confidence in him, you'd say, he's my starter next year, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be what you'd say if you had yeah. full confidence in him? Not, yeah. well, we're going to bring in other guys to compete. So that doesn't make any sense to me uh, at all, just like you. Of course, uh, there's been a lot of quarterbacks' names who have been thrown around. One of them is Russell Wilson. Uh, you can see this here, uh, his next team, the Steelers. The oh, favorites God. at plus 150. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, oh, Bronco, God. Uh, Falcon, Jeez, Falcons, no. Broncos. He ain't going back to the Broncos. Uh, Raiders, Patriots, Vikings, Commanders. Uh, there are some states where you can uh, <sighs> wager on that at BetMGM. Yeah, and there I you got go. The, Russell Wilson. I got the um, uh, you know season ticket renewal letter today. I got to hurry up and make my payment to the Steelers. And, I mean, who wants to send them money if they're going to get Russell Wilson? Mm. Yeah, I I think you want to wait. You know, it is funny. It's great. They give you that piece of paper, that email before free agency and before all the moves are made. You want to make sure they get in there before all the upset customers call them back and say, Russell Wilson, uh, give me my money back. Uh, Kirk Cousins also they had some numbers for, and he's minus 250 to go back to the Vikings. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. I don't think he's going to be back with the Vikings, honestly. Uh, Falcons, Raiders, Patriots, Steelers. There's the Steelers on there at 14 to one. Uh, for uh, he can still sling it. I'll give him that. I mean, that guy can, he can throw the football. There's no, there's no getting around. He made a ton of money in the NFL. Mm-hmm. He certainly has. Uh, people are starting to get cut. I saw the Patriots cut JC Jackson. That's going to save them like 14 million. The Eagles cut Kevin Byard. That will save them 13 million in cap space uh, for next year. They traded for him this year at the deadline, Scotty, from Tennessee. Uh, right. Did not help them out much, uh, and they will now let him go. I do have a Sirianni for you uh, when we come back. A couple of other things, and then we'll get into uh, some of the college rack for this weekend. So well. are they blaming uh, Bayard for the reason they pike going down the stretch? Is that I, hilarious I or what? He's the fall guy? <laughs> Very possible. in this day and age of the NBA to, you know, miss one player and have the wheels fall off. They're kind of hanging on to one of those final play-in tournament positions in the Eastern Conference, and there are teams like the Nets and the Bulls and, and the Raptors who are right in that same vicinity, who now they're looking and saying, well, if the Hawks are without a player like Trey Young, and we talk about how important he is, averaging over 26 points. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. Watch the final seconds of Illinois and Penn State. And by Dave's reaction, uh, you think uh, you, you know what yes. happened. How about that, Dave? How about that? We're off the rundown. Sorry. Storm the court. You beat the 12th team in the country. That's fine. Second best in the Big Ten. That's fine. We are Penn State. Look at the crew jumping. This is so much fun. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. 
Like the Minnesota Wild were down by two goals today. Uh, they were down by three goals actually today at one point, and they came back and won. Like teams, like you know, the Edmonton Oilers and the Coyote game went back and forth. The NHL really, you could argue, really is the best sport for in-game betting, where you can pull the trigger on both teams. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Lakers lose by double digits last night on the road in Phoenix against the Suns. The Suns get their first victory following the All-Star break, winning by 10 in covering. Anthony Davis played 42 minutes in that game. LeBron James played 37 minutes in a loss. This is the same thing. It's like repeating this over and over and over. Sure, you want to win these basketball games? Yes, but you sort of say to yourself, all right, at what cost do we have? The early line, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. We'll start with the Eagles coach and what he's talking about, Nick Sirianni. Yeah, let's say hi to Nick uh, from the Combine this week, talking about A.J. Brown uh, and him being the best wide receiver in Eagles history uh, is what Nick Sirianni says. Uh, Let's hear him sell this. Just a great teammate, a great person. Um, in my opinion, best receiver that's been in Philadelphia, and I grew up a Terrell Owens fan, and I grew up a, uh, how he says I'm too young to, to uh, like Mike Quick, but I was a huge Mike Quick fan, um, and, and it's pretty cool Quick. that I get to uh, do some Carmichael? interviews with him er- every once in a while. Carmichael. And Come on. But you look at the stats, and you look at what A.J.'s done in a two-year span. He's, he's had the two most productive years ever as an as a eagle-wide receiver, and so Man, like when you have one of your best players being also one of your best leaders, that's that's special. I mean, <laughs> I've seen it all, honestly. I, and I you know all that, that he is. is. All all that is is him. He knows his. You know, remember AJ Brown was like all mad at the end of the year, like he, everybody kept going to the locker. He was all like yeah. he didn't want to talk, and they were like, that's called I'm I'm trying to smooth the ego uh, during the off season yeah. and get him uh, in the yeah. best. I'm going to go out and say he's the best player and best receiver in franchise history. We're going to make him happy, do all that. Uh, a few weeks ago after the Super Bowl, we played uh, those clips of Brandon Ayuk basically making it seem like he didn't want to play for the 49ers anymore. Uh, John Lynch says they would like to keep Brandon Ayuk uh, in San Francisco. Here he is. You know, I think it's – that was a welcome uh, site that, you know, that the cap was going up. I think the thing you have to understand, it went up for everyone. So it's not like unique to our team, um, you know, but, but we have some challenges. We have a lot of good players, a lot of you good players who we've rewarded. Your team. Brandon's one that uh, we think incredibly highly of. Uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, just guys we, around we really our building, the way he approaches the game. He's a He's competitor. He's painting the picture Nick um, did. He loves it. He's a it. warrior. Uh, he plays warrior. with such a physicality, also with a grace, the way some, some of the positions his body can get into. And then he's got a flair for making plays when it matter most. And, and he's served us very well as a, as a franchise. And, you know, I think we've got a, a nice track record of extending the players that are important to us. And uh, Brandon's a guy we want to keep around uh, for a long time. Oh, how nice. Okay. Here we Bump go. Bump him up. Whatever. 
Pump him up. We'll see what happens. Okay. Give him the bag, uh, mm-hmm. and then he won't go anywhere. Uh, there's growing optimism that the Chiefs will re-sign Chris Jones. Well, thank God for that. Uh, the Houston Texans emerge as the top destination for Saquon Barkley. That's if he gets out of New York, although now with the cap going up, the talk is back that they may actually uh, tag Barkley again uh, to keep him around the Giants for one more oh, year. Oh, that'll make him uh, real happy. He'll be thrilled uh, if they go and do that. Texans left tackle Laramie Tunsil had surgery on his knee after the playoffs. The Lions are going to meet with Amon St. Brown's, uh, Mount Ross St. Brown's agent about an extension. They should. He's been a badass for them. The Vikings are going to release Alexander Madison. They're running back. The Patriots have he offered Kyle anyway. Duggar. I knew he did. A new deal before free agency. Trey Lance will remain with the Cowboys. They will owe him $4.25 million to do that. And a judge has ruled that Jerry Jones must take a paternity test to determine if he's the father of a 27-year-old woman that has been fighting him, saying that he is uh, her father. So now Jerry, the court says, does have to go find that out. I also have to be tested uh, for that same problem with her. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) So that's how uh, Jerry's offseason is off to that kind of a start uh, for the Cowboys. Uh, There you go. NFL news and notes. You'll do more with uh, Adam Kaplan coming up here uh, in a couple minutes as he's at the combine watching everybody running the 40 uh, right now. As more guys hitting the ball in the water, by the way, down. I think Ooh. somebody just hit Duke in Harrow's backyard. Oh, oh did you see the guy? Uh, Wait, do you see this guy? <laughs> Wait, do you see this guy missing putts? Look at, uh, look, look at what happened to this guy missing putts. He missed oh, okay. nine putts at the hole. It was the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen in my life. So, Who is that? Who is that, that is, guy? I, I saw this from earlier. That is Thomas Dietrich. He was putting for birdie on that first putt and he ended up going plus four on this hole as i don't know he just tried to knock hockey it uh back and forth through the really great that he could not get it in that he is uh, a tough four way to of finish your day from one foot away and he shanked all four of them around the cup that was the worst professional putting display i've ever seen in my life I mean, I've done better at the Cape Cod Irish Open uh, than what Dietrich just did there uh, out of that. Even that? I wouldn't have done that four times. Uh, college rack for you here. We talked about a few things over the weekend earlier, but wow. Gonzaga beat San Fran last night, 86-68. Big win for them. St. Mary's crushed Pepperdine. Washington State uh, beat USC, but they did not cover that fail. game. Ohio State beat Nebraska. Another fail by Hoiberg. On the road in Columbus, 78-69, a win for the Buckeyes. The Anteaters, the late-night oh. obscure mid-major play of the night, uh, covered big uh, out there in the Big West. We love uh, the Anteaters uh, in that conference of UC Irvine. Uh, they are our friends on Coast to Coast. Caitlin Clark will enter the 2024 WNBA draft. I guess that means She's she'll be a member of the— fever. Indiana Fever uh, is where Caitlin Clark will be as they own the top pick. Well, she goes in from that one cornfield to the next. That's true. Uh, that's a, an easy transition uh, over there uh, just to go skip over to Indiana and take care of business. All right, so there it is. Here's tonight, a light night on a Friday. Uh, Bowling Green and Ohio getting together uh, in the MAC. Game of the night, actually, for me, Dayton and Loyola in the A 10. Good game here. Minus one and a half for Dayton on the road. I kind of like the Ramblers tonight, Scotty, uh, in that spot. And we we have a couple late-night Mountain West games with Air Force at Utah State and Fresno and Nevada. Some heavy lumber in both of those. Yeah, I'm with you. I like the Ramblers at home in Chicago to get it done. I like Ohio. I think they're going to spank Bowling Green. I bet on Bowling Green the other night laying three and a half, and they lost by like ten and at home, no less. And then I love Nevada and Utah State. I bet on Utah State and Logan uh, this morning. It's moved to 17 and a half. I laid 15 and a hook, and it's been going up all day. I think 17 and a half starting to get dangerous, but it smells like 20 or more to me. Air Force is awful in conference play, and Utah State has been great, particularly in Logan. Uh, we do have some other games tonight. I don't know if you have any on the card here. We have 
some Mac games with Ryder in Niagara, Manhattan and Siena. Got a little uh, Mount St. Mary's and Canisius. Uh, there's some Ivy League games tonight. Uh, you've got a few, um, um, some Sun Belt action for you with Southern Miss and the Raging Cajuns. Anything else on the card? Yes, uh, Bellarmine and Austin P. The over wow. one thirty-eight in the hook. Iona at home. The Gales minus two and a half against Quinna Ferreliak. Also, I have to pull this up. It's a tremendous strain trying to get it right. Here we go. Uh, let me see if I can get this. There they are. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Georgia Southern minus four. Uh, the Utah State Air Force over. Uh, and on top of that, Yale, Dartmouth, the over. And then uh, let's see what else I got here. Uh, I think that North Florida minus two and a half. I'm going North Florida minus two and a half. So those are all uh, the extra college games, everything else on Pharrell on the bench. North Florida taking on Stetson tonight. Uh, down there in the A-Sun. So you have yeah, that working for you. in trouble tonight. <laughs> Pharrellermine on the card uh, oh. here against Austin P. We love Pharrellermine on coast to coast. All right, there's the a over. lot of games on Saturday. Got the over in that one. Uh, we have a lot of games on Saturday. There's five rank versus rank games. We talked about a couple of them. After you talk to Adam, I'll give you the full list. Uh, of course, some of them we didn't have the spreads yet for, but I'll give you the full list of all these games on Saturday. There's a ton of big ones. All right, so we're going to hit those next on top of hockey. This is beautiful. Yes. in this day and age of the NBA to, you know, miss one player and have the wheels fall off. They're kind of hanging on to one of those final play in tournament positions in the Eastern Conference. And there are teams like the Nets and the Bulls and, and the Raptors who are right in that same vicinity, who now they're looking and saying, well, if the Hawks are without a player like Trey Young, and we talk about how important he is averaging over 26 points. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Seconds of Illinois and Penn State, and by Dave's reaction, uh, you think uh, you, you know what yes. happened? How about that, Dave? How about that? We're off the rundown. Sorry, storm the court. You beat the 12th team in the country. That's fine. Second best in the Big Ten. That's fine. We are Penn State. Look at the crew jumping. This is so much fun. In game live, prime time only on Sports Grid. Like the Minnesota Wild were down by two goals today. Uh, they were down by three goals actually today at one point, and they came back and won. Like teams, like you know, the Edmonton Oilers and the Coyote game went back and forth. The NHL really, you could argue, really is the best sport for in-game betting, where you can pull the trigger on both teams. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Lakers lose by double digits last night on the road in Phoenix against the Suns. The Suns get their first victory following the All-Star break, winning by 10 in covering. Anthony Davis played 42 minutes in that game. LeBron James played 37 minutes in a loss. This is the same thing. It's like repeating this over and over and over. Sure, if you want to win these basketball games, yes, but you sort of say to yourself, all right, at what cost do we have? The early line, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, 
and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Higa, the hippopotamus, is now in the lead at the Cognizant. And uh, the Irish bear just sprayed one off at a green into the crowd and smacked some guy in the side of the head. So there's a lot of action. A very tight leaderboard down in South Florida. I will tell you, BetMGM is in on it as well because they're at the tournament giving away money to all of the patrons. Just walking on the course, giving away money in droves. Once again, all you have to do is sign up for the BetMGM mobile app on iOS or Android or at BetMGM.com. Open an account with five bucks with your name on it. Bet five bucks standard odds on anything. A golfer, an NBA game, a baseball game, a hockey game, whatever you got to do. Boom, win or lose. Boom. You're getting 150 in bonus bets immediately. Go to iOS or Android or BetMGM.com to get the BetMGM mobile app. You're going to love it. Once you get 150 in it, run with it like the wind. You're going to be on top of the world. All right, Carver High, Saturday, a litany of huge games on the college hardwood. Yeah, I've got uh, so many for you here. We have a few boards. Uh, Like I mentioned, this is the first time all year you have five ranked versus ranked games that are going to be on the card, including Florida and South Carolina getting together. That is a noon East tip. Uh, down there. You have Kansas and Baylor, huge game. Illinois and Wisconsin. Oregon and Arizona, the Marquette-Creighton game, which we discussed earlier. Virginia and Duke getting together tomorrow as well. That's just the first, the early games that I have for you there. Well, I mean, on that rack right there, I like South Carolina and Columbia. I like Baylor and Waco. I actually, it's always hard to win on the road in the Big Ten. I think Illinois is going to have their hands full at the Cole. But Illinois has uh, played better than Wisconsin. Wisconsin, uh, in my opinion, I mean, I saw them lose the other night right to Indiana. I couldn't even believe it. So uh, are they going to lose at home, back-to-back games? They they lost in Bloomington, going to go home and lose? That's a sketchy game. Oregon and Arizona, I always like the Cats at the McHale Center. Depending on what the number is, Oregon might be able to cover. They're both really good. I like Creighton at home with Kyle Brenner and company as long as – Kolek is injured with the oblique. You heard Homer today, True, say that no one knows if he's going to play. If he doesn't play, Marquette is not beating Creighton in Omaha. And I like Duke and Cameron Indoor against Virginia anyway. He cut it. Uh, next, Iowa State and UCF getting together. UCF's had some good wins at home in that conference this year. Could be a little tricky for the Cyclones. NC State visits North Carolina. Houston and Oklahoma getting together, Michigan State and Purdue, Tennessee and Alabama at night, Gonzaga and St. Mary's getting together in the WCC, a great Saturday of hoops. I love St. Mary's and Moraga to finish off their perfect season in the WCC and prove their worth. I like Alabama at home, Purdue clearly at Mackey, unbeatable. Michigan State gets beat at the Breslin these days. They're not going into Purdue and winning. I like Houston to win in Norman against Oklahoma, North Carolina at home at the Dean Center. They'll get it done against the Wolfpack. And I do believe Iowa State will go to Orlando and beat Central Florida easily. Uh, And that's just, uh, we only gave you like 10 or 15 of the like 130 games uh, that there are on Saturday, as always. And a big game Sunday for Mafia Seton Hall Pirates. They play UConn, Scotty. Uh, On Sunday afternoon, uh, they could use themselves an upset win there. I know they've already beaten UConn once this year. That's not uh, happening. But the the Pirates could use uh, a little bit of help uh, on Sunday against the Huskies. There you go. College rack for the weekend. How about hockey? Everybody Uh, loves hockey. Everybody Everybody does love hockey. Uh, The Golden Knights almost pulled off a huge comeback in Boston last night, Sky. They were down 3-0 after the first period. Got the game to 4-4, but the Bruins end up beating them 5-4 late. You had the Leafs minus the puck and a half. You didn't care about all the nonsense. 20 years since they beat them in regulation at home. 
They took care of business. Matthews scored a goal there that got them rolling. Uh, Stars scored three goals in the first period on Winnipeg. I thought the under was in, was in bad shape, but got the under. Uh, 4-1 was the final. Uh, was able to hold up uh, for us in that one. Colorado beat Chicago 5-0. Seattle beat the Penguins 2-0. Kings beat Vancouver. And, of course, uh, the Islanders won in Detroit. And I bet against the Islanders, Scotty, uh, going into the third period. They were up a goal, and I played Detroit live, plus 230. And they, and they gave up a goal like, 10, like 10 seconds into the third. Detroit tied it. Gave yeah. up a goal. Detroit tied it again. And then right. Barzell scored uh, late for the Islanders, and they were able to. I win. went, um, you know, as I said earlier, I went 9-3. and three. I lost that Detroit bet. I actually had them at minus buck 15 and lost that bet, lost the Penguin bet. And I don't remember what the third one was, but uh, I hit nine of the 12 NHL bets last night. And the minus one well, and a half. But that was only even money with the Leafs. It wasn't a, a nice yeah. payout. But tonight, tonight I'm doing it again against that Arizona team. I'm going to lay the goal and a half again tonight with Ottawa. Well, why don't we start there? Uh, as we mentioned, Arizona, I, what, they lost 14 games in a row now? Something like that uh, as they head into Ottawa to take on the Senators. Senators minus 190 now, plus a buck 55 for Arizona. You can lay that goal and a half with Ottawa, Scotty, at plus 125 right now. Yeah, I, I laid it, and uh, I actually got it at plus 135 uh, this morning. I just want to uh, look here and see. Uh, I have another one in terms of uh, a total in, in another game, but I did go Ottawa minus a one and a half. I was just checking to see if I um, bet it any other way. I didn't bet I didn't bet the total. I just bet the puck line. Uh, the Flyers are in D.C. against the Capitals tonight. Flyers minus 145 road favorites here caps plus a buck 20 flat six the total I like the over in this game Scotty between the Flyers and the Capitals yeah that's the bet I made the bet I already bet it Flyers Capitals over six goals and I uh, I bet that this morning and I don't let me let me see if I can find it in terms of uh, the price I got on it I got it at uh, minus a buck seven Minus 107. And finally, only three games. The late night game is at the Duck Pond, where the Devils are still out in California. They have Anaheim tonight. Devils minus 275, plus 220 for the Ducks. Six and a half the total. You can lay the puck and a half with the Devils, uh, who had a, they scored a touchdown in San Jose uh, the other night uh, at minus 110 right now. And so did the Ducks. They just didn't kick the extra yeah. point. So I bet the <laughs> Ducks tonight plus a goal and okay. a half at minus a buck eight. Uh, I got that price this morning. Uh, so there you go. Uh, quiet night in the hockey only three games a uh, full slate for you it is unfortunate i don't like when there's quiet nights i need like at least five six seven games not only that uh, the on games all suck uh that too uh that too when philly washington is your best game uh that is a problem that's for sure uh, i see you've been checking out uh before we go you that i see you've been checking out some pirate spring training action i gotta tell I you have. i've i've seen a lot of like i saw reynolds hit a bomb uh, today, I saw uh, Hayes the other day hit a bomb. The Buccos have been like the talk of spring training so far uh, down there in Florida. Yeah, listen, uh, they won today 12 to 8 again. Uh, and Paul Skeens uh, is throwing absolute fire, gas, BBs, whatever you want to call it. My man is going well over a buck. He threw a buck two the other day, and he already said. I'm ready to go. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, they drafted him number one. And if he's not on their opening day roster, something's wrong with the Earth's axis. I mean, this kid is better than anyone they have, including who they just gave a boatload of money to, Mitch Helen Keller. Skeens is better than him, too. He is without question. And he's got catcher. the hottest girlfriend in, in literally in North America. And she lives near me. <laughs> Hottest girlfriend in North America. Uh, the girl from LSU, you, uh, she's so hot right now that I'm literally, I'm yeah. starting to sweat. Just talking about people, her. I'm sweating. Uh, people, people love her. Uh, I had these holdover from yesterday for you, the NL and the AL odds. I had the NL when we were doing all that Otani stuff. Of course, the Dodgers are the favorites uh, for the National League right now. There you see it for them. Uh, already plus 180. Uh, Dodgers and the Braves, it's their world, Scotty. Everybody else. Uh, is just hoping to live in it in the National League. 
Yeah, it's the uh, clearly the Dodgers and Phillies because the Braves can't beat the Phillies. Oh, and the Irish Bear, I mean, he leaves the birdie pot like this, uh, folks, even after hitting the guy in uh, the crowd on that par 5 18. I don't teach he him. Was, uh, he was like a, a half a foot, not even away from still birdieing the hole. Instead, he will finish with a four under 67, eight under going into the weekend. We will be all right with that. Uh, on the American League side, the Yankees are uh, the co-favorites now with Houston, if you could believe that. Uh, the Yankees being co-favorites for the American League. Rondon, Rodon, Rodon got lit up today by his own guys, too, in a simulated game. And then, like, had all these excuses, like, well, you know, they're good hitters, too. Uh, that's another guy. It would be an awful sign. I mean, uh, second honestly, year for Rodon, he's awful. You're right. And then, honestly, the, the Orioles are better than the Yankees. I won't deny that they have Judge and Soto and... Really, absolutely nothing else. I mean, I, we've already been down this road with LeMayhew, and they're talking about, is he going to lead off? And are they going to trade Glaber Stanton. Day and all that stuff? Stanton. Stanton. Slim oh, he down. looks terrific. He's lost a lot Slim of weight. Down. I don't want to hear it. That guy will be – he'll be injured by the end of the show. It's amazing. Uh, average MLB salary rose 7.1% to $4.5 million. Saudi Arabia launches an uncontested 2034 World Cup bid. Sure, why not? Because we had so much fun in Qatar uh, a couple years ago. We'll run it back. Uh, we'll head to Saudi Arabia this time for the World Cup. Uh, and the prosecutor handling the sports wagering case against those Iowa State athletes, Scotty, has asked the judge to dismiss all charges. End it. It could be over. All those kids could get off. I think all the children should be allowed to gamble and get more Christmas presents. This day and age of the NBA to you know miss one player and have the wheels fall off. They're kind of hanging on to one of those final play in tournament positions in the Eastern Conference. And there are teams like the Nets and the Bulls and, and the Raptors who are right in that same vicinity who now they're looking and saying, well, if the Hawks are without a player like Trey Young and we talk about how important he is, averaging over 26 points. Newswire only on Sports Grid. Seconds of Illinois and Penn State, and by Dave's reaction, uh, you think uh, you, you know what yes. happened? How about that, Dave? How about that? We're off the rundown. Sorry, storm the court. You beat the 12th team in the country. That's fine. Second best in the Big Ten. That's fine. We are Penn State. Look at the crew jumping. This is so much fun. In game live, prime time only on Sports Grid. Like the Minnesota Wild were down by two goals today. Uh, they were down by three goals actually today at one point, and they came back and won. Like teams, like you know, the Edmonton Oilers and the Coyote game went back and forth. The NHL really, you could argue, really is the best sport for in-game betting, where you can pull the trigger on both teams. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Lakers lose by double digits last night on the road in Phoenix against the Suns. The Suns get their first victory following the All-Star break, winning by 10 in covering. Anthony Davis played 42 minutes in that game. LeBron James played 37 minutes in a loss. This is the same thing. It's like repeating this over and over and over. Sure, you want to win these basketball games, yes, but you sort of say to yourself, all right, at what cost do we have? The early line, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one 
of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Kaplan is our NFL insider, and he's been at the Combine in Indianapolis. A couple of uh, quick facts. Today, Busted Cap in your ass ran a 4 3 9 40. And secondly, he is refusing to have a relationship any further with the Eagles head coach, Nick Sirianni, after failing to mention Harold Carmichael as the greatest <laughs> receiver in Eagles history who's in the Hall of Fame. But he knobbed on... A.J. Brown, because Brown wanted to leave the Eagles after not getting enough targets. And now Adam Kaplan is in full protest mode. Yeah, I, I, I've met Nick before. I don't know him, but that was surprising that he said that. He's forgetting the great number 17, Harold Carmichael, who is a Hall of Famer. But by the way, Scott, most people don't know this. He ended his career not as an Eagle, but as a Dallas Cowboy. How unfortunate. Exactly. That's why I mentioned it. <laughs> so yeah, yesterday yeah. you had uh, DNs, D tackles, uh, linebackers working out. Today was the uh, back end, corners, safeties, tight ends even working out today. Yeah. A lot of workouts. Yeah, so by the way, they're going on now. The tight ends will work out tonight. The safeties are going on here. The workouts about a couple hundred feet from me at, at – uh, at Lucas Oil Stadium, and they're going on. And we just had the cornerbacks finish. By the way, these numbers are incredible. Now, as I said yesterday, the times are going to be a little bit faster because of the turf. It's a, it's deemed a fast track. The corners, Nate Wiggins, who unfortunately got hurt during his workout, but his workout was tremendous. Best 40 time of anybody so far, a 4-2-8, 40-yard dash. His vertical was 36. His broad jump was 10.7. Nate Wiggins, who, by the way, is one of the top three corners for this draft already. He's going to be a first-rounder. But we got to figure out what this groin injury looks like. He'll get that checked out and tested. Quinion Mitchell, a corner out of Toledo, who was great. Who was great during senior ball week. He's out of Toledo. He ran a 4-3-3-40. That is huge for him. He's going to be a top 20 pick. Could go inside that top 15, t- inside the upper half here. He, he had a great workout today, but that 40 was great. And Max Mitchell, you and I talked about him during senior ball week. He was terrific, 4-3-9-40. His 10-yard split was really good, one of the best here, 151. The vertical, phenomenal, 40.5. And his broad jump, 11.4 feet, phenomenal workout here. He's going to be a second-round pick for all. Scott, I was told before he went to the senior role, probably late third-round pick, but everything he's done so far has been terrific. You might remember his his dad, Gary, who also played at Rutgers, who played the the NFL for a little bit. His brother, Bo, was a seventh-round picker for the Seahawks. is with the Packers. He has an older brother, Gary Jr., played Delaware State football, and also his mom played hoops at Rutgers. What an athletic family these Mo- these Meltons are. My God, the whole family. The I know. dog. Crazy. The dog played <laughs> yeah. professionally. He was a cricket player, yeah. the dog. Uh, that Max <laughs> Melton, a 439, he ran the same time as um, Adam Kaplan. Uh, Quinn Jan Mitchell out of Toledo, <laughs> you had told me about him at, uh, at the Senior Bowl. But the guy I want right. to talk about again is, is, is Wiggins. Wiggins had the best day. And then, pop, he felt a pop yep. in his groin and uh, limped off, had the best day. But now his pro day is a month and a week away. Uh, you think he'll be ready for that after he – it sounds like he tore his groin. Yeah, and it depends on the testing, What, what how deep the strain is. He, he, he had said that. He thinks it's a strain. Now, again, there are different degrees of strain, grade one, two, and three. If it's three, forget about it. Two, possibly one, he should be good to go. It depends on the testing and how the MRI looks. But, uh, yeah, that's a shame that Wiggins got hurt. But the bottom line is these corners have helped themselves. It's sort of a top-heavy cornerback group, by the way. Uh, But, Mel, no cornerback so far. We're talking about the offseason. The senior ball and the combine here in Indy, including today, has helped themselves more than Max Melton out of Rutgers. 
I did want to mention as well that um, Adam ran the 40 against Greg Cosell, who clocked in with a <laughs> 4 7 40, as opposed to Kaplan's 4 3 9 dynamic speed from Busta Cap. Are you ready for this one? Greg, Greg Cosell was an all city shortstop and, and hoops player. By the way, he played he, he played uh, high school ball in, in Brooklyn, and he also played college basketball at Amherst. Believe it or not, you wouldn't look at you wouldn't know that by looking at Greg. He was his, a pretty good athlete back in his day. His uh, early Sunday morning film breakdown show with uh, Sal Palantonio is the best football show on television, bar none. Oh no, no, no doubt, it, it is absolutely phenomenal and. Uh, yeah, Greg, Greg is the film guru. There's no question about it. Uh, but but by the way, the, these workouts, and again, the, the thing here, we should mention this before we move on. Because a guy like Max Melton did so well here, I don't know if there's any reason for him to work out at, at, at the pro day. How much better could he get than 4.39 at the 40? He's not known as a speed guy, by the way. To do better than 4.4 in the 40 for Max Melton is absolutely huge for him. He's absolutely helped his draft value going forward, no question about it. What about Tyler Owens from uh, yeah. Lubbock at Texas Tech? How about this kid? He's a safety, by the way. Again, the safety workouts are going on now, but his vertical, incredible. 41, his broad jump, the best so far of any player, 12.2. He's helped himself because broad jump and vertical, it's all about the loader body explosion. Now, you're always going to go by the tape. The tape the, is 75% of your grade, the all 22. But the bottom line is these athletic workouts could certainly help these players. Curious, though, on the on-field workouts, remember, they'll do some field stuff uh, looking for that. And then on Saturday, you got the quarterbacks finally work out the, the running backs and wide receivers. Now, we have some quarterbacks. They're called throwing quarterbacks. They're going to throw to the tight ends later today. And then what about uh, Sunday? It's the, is it uh, offensive linemen and kickers and yeah. punters? Yeah. Yeah, it's guards, centers, and tackles, kickers and punters. But the big thing, therefore – those guys is the uh, the short shuttle because you're not worried about a 40 time for an offensive lineman. If they beat five flat, you're, you're loving it. But the big story today, Scott, and it's caused some waves, and we'll, we'll, we got to talk about this, is we talked about Caleb Williams is not going to work out here. That's not a big deal. But he's the only player, and this is my 23rd combine, I've never heard of a player saying, you know what, I'm not even going to do the medical here. That's, that's basically un, un, unprecedented, though he did say he's going to have medicals for any team that has him in there. And by the way, all clubs share medical information, but, but this is unprecedented. And he's also, Scott, this is another thing. He, he's not represented. He doesn't even have a, I, he does not have, even have an agent. He doesn't have that's an agent. Crazy. No veteran agent would ever let this happen. This is now, listen, ridiculous to not, to not do medical here. Uh, okay. The medicals is one thing. He's, uh, he explained that he just is doing medicals with the teams that he's interviewing with. And he doesn't need to waste his time doing a bunch of other uh, medicals for teams he's not going to have anything to do with. He's like, I'm, he, he knows he's the number one. So he's like, I don't care what you think. And the thing that bothers me is not that. It's that he's actually stupid enough not to have an agent in the NFL, and he's actually falling for his dad's bullshack. His father is insane, and his father has convinced him that he can do the deal. His father is also so stupid, and you can quote me on this, that he thinks he's not going to get a – rookie deal a four and the fifth year option he's not gonna he's not gonna sign any deal that has uh four years and a, and a fifth year option he's not doing it he won't do it and he's saying that he'll hold out until uh jesus comes back again and i think his father is an idiot so here's the thing now as we go forward and here's why it's important to get medicals early L let's say that he doesn't visit some of these teams until late march and early april Free agency starts, Scott, in less than two weeks. If you're the Washington or Chicago or New England, where Williams is going to go from one through three, still he's the presumptive number one pick. But if you're going to draft Caleb Williams, you got to know that there's nothing wrong with him. Now, no one thinks there's anything medically or any kind of issue with him, but you got to know what the medical is going to look like. This is That's not right. good that he's doing this. This is actually a major mistake, and I'm, I, I'm looking forward to talking to personal people tonight about this as we get through the next 24 to 48 hours. Do you believe that there's a chance because of these decisions that he could uh, lose the uh, number one draft slot? Here's what I wrote for Pro Football Network two, week, two months ago, actually. It was my first mock draft for those guys at ProFootballNetwork.com. What I said was this. Unless they find something that they, they are not comfortable with, he's going to be the first pick overall, Caleb Williams. So here we go, two months forward here. We're at the Combine. 
we didn't know this coming in here that he wouldn't do medicals. He's not doing medicals. That is a big no-no because teams have to know about what they're going to be looking at here. And, and, and I'm going to also look, and we're going to talk more about this on Monday, Scott, on Coast to Coast, on my regular hit at, at 525 Eastern. I want to know how these interviews are going. What is his response here? Because his father could not be in these meetings, by the way. I want to know how these interviews go with him and what his response is on why he's not working out. He told the media today, but I want to hear how these teams think about that. Yeah, it's fascinating. It really is. It's changing uh, people's perspective on him. I can guarantee you that. Oh, yeah. What about sure. what about the uh, post NFL combine? What's going to be happening with like pro days, college workouts, okay. private workouts, and pre-draft yep. visits to teams? All right. So the pro day workouts start over the next week to ten days. It's important here for the players, Scott, who do not work out. They pretty much have to work out their pro day. Uh, so, and, and that way they get, they need to get a, what's called a verified 40 time. You have to have that before the draft. Now you could also work out for teams privately. These are just, sometimes they're positional drills. Quarterbacks sometimes don't work out here, but the workout for the teams publicly, uh, pr- excuse me, privately, they cannot be done at a team's complex. The last of it is the, pr- the pre-draft visits to the team facilities. You can't work out there, but you can medically test there, by the way. And, and those typically you stay there all day. You meet with the front office, the general manager, the personnel director, the head coach, and the positional coaches, and, and you could bring them to the board. You could tape those interviews, by the way, but you cannot work out at, at any team facility. So let's talk about uh, roster cuts. Uh, what did you yeah. think of the Eagles today with the move for Kevin Byard? Obviously, that was a fiscal decision. It's, it's totally on cash, and it, it's two things. Performance, he didn't perform well. And the thing is, Scott, let's not forget, he got traded from the Titans. He had to learn a new defense in season. And then when Matt Patricia came in, he he brought his own view of it and kind of changed things around. So he played three different defenses last season. If Byard was owed about $14.5 million in cash, the Eagles will save $13 million in cap space. But it's not about cap space. It's about performance and cash. And then the the commanders cut their left tackle, their starting left tackle, Charles Leno, and also cut Logan Thomas, who's a former college quarterback who wound up playing tight end. But – the big one, Scott, was Kevin Byard, and the Eagles have to reshape their, their secondary. The only guy we nev- we definitely know will be back will be Darius Slay, who will be certainly a starting corner. But they have to look at their safety position at their other corner because James Bradbury did not play well last season, although Howie Roseman, the GM, did say this week that they're going forward with him. Well, that that's of now. We'll see if he's with the team this season. A lot of people, even though they just don't care about the running back position anymore, I'm still interested in where you think Pollard – and Barkley are going to end up. Yeah. When you look at Saquon Barkley, Scott, he's not getting a franchise. There's no chance of that. The, the Giants have some interest in bringing him back, but he's going to have some interest out there, but he's not going to get anywhere close to the kind of money he would have made a couple of years ago. You're talking about 11, 12 million. That's not happening. Uh, Josh Jacobs, the Raiders still want him back. There's no question about it. They want to be a run first team under, under Antonio Pierce. Uh, th- that much I could tell you. And Tony Pollard, see the problem with the Cowboys here, not only will they not franchise him, as I told you in the other show, they got they have to get off of the salary cap number of almost sixty million for Dak Prescott. They have to get that new deal done. They also want to extend CD Lamb's contract. Uh, they want to get through Michael Parsons if they can. They've got a lot of work to do, and they're going to get started on that. But you know, Tony Pollard, Scott, he's not a starting running back per se. He's got to be in a two back system. They need a wherever he goes, Scott. He's got to have a physical back to complement him because he's not a grinding back. That's not what he is. There's been people saying both of them are uh, a Houston destination, and we know that's not possible. Yeah, and, and they got to move Damian Pierce, by the way. He did not fit in. He was great his, his rookie season, not so much. And, and also, don't forget, Devin Singletary's up. He's a free agent. Right. He did a good job for the Texas last season at running back. A great job from the Combine this week in Indianapolis, and congratulations on your 4.3940. <laughs> mean, 60. day and age of the nba to you know miss one player and have the wheels fall off they're kind of hanging on to one of those final play in tournament positions in the eastern conference and there are teams like the nets and the bulls and and the raptors who are right in that same vicinity who now they're looking and saying well if the hawks are without a player like trey young and we talk about how important he is averaging over 26 points newswire 
only on Sports Grid. We just watched the final seconds of Illinois and Penn State, and by Dave's reaction, uh, you think uh, you, you know what happened there. How about that, Dave? We're off the rundown. Sorry. Storm the court. You beat the 12th team in the country. That's fine. Second best in the Big Ten. That's fine. We are Penn State. Look at the crew jumping. This is so much fun. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Like the Minnesota Wild were down by two goals today. Uh, they were down by three goals actually today at one point. And they came back and won. Like teams like, you know, the Edmonton Oiler and the Coyote game went back and forth. The NHL really, you could argue, really is the best sport for in-game betting where you can pull the trigger on both teams. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Lakers lose by double digits last night on the road in Phoenix against the Suns. The Suns get their first victory following the All-Star break, winning by 10 in covering. Anthony Davis played 42 minutes in that game. LeBron James played 37 minutes in a loss. This is the same thing. It's like repeating this over and over and over. Sure, do you want to win these basketball games? Yes, but you sort of say to yourself, all right, at what cost do we have? The early line, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Finish time. I just saw Carver High with Little Willie styling. Ray Donovan series spinoff. The Donovans is in the works. Sweet. Scientists fear 100% fatal zombie deer disease will mutate to infect humans. Isn't that lovely? Doctors remove 150 live bugs from a Florida man's nose. Piglet rescued, adopted by state rep after being tossed like a Nerf football at a Mardi Gras party. They were tossing the little piggy around. Undercover sting in New York City Park nabs nine mushroom and cocaine pushers after a news report on a brazen open air drug market. Thousands of decaying barrels off Los Angeles' coast may contain radioactive waste. Isn't that lovely? A Minnesota felon arrested for murder of an L.A. model, Melissa Mooney, who was found stuffed in a refrigerator at her luxury apartment. Jesus. Shippensburg University suspends a fraternity due to hazing allegations. And Virginia has shut down all fraternities. Long Island exterminator is arrested for filming a 19-year-old on a hidden camera he set up as she undressed after he got chemicals on her clothing on purpose. A drug dealer tried to sneak liquid fentanyl, cocaine, and PCP into Rikers Island through court documents soaked in the drugs he gave to a partner. Court documents soaked in fentanyl. Genius. A New York black market plastic surgeon was sentenced to 48 years in prison after a failed butt lift killed a patient. What is happening? Health experts in New Jersey are warning about dietary supplements sold at gas stations, calling them gas station heroin. A Texas teen is charged with helping his girlfriend commit suicide. Awful. Smoking bag of fecal matter left outside Trump Tower. Now that's a brilliant idea as well. The old poop in the bag on fire trick. Ohio mom who left 16-month-old daughter to starve to death for 10 days 
pictured gleaming on a beach in Puerto Rico, left her kid home to starve to death. GTD is next. Go to ForAllInEvents.com for action. We'll see you tomorrow on Betting Above the Rim at 1 p.m. Eastern. Have a great weekend and a great night. 